From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. Oh, you joined us at just the perfect moment. Sunrise happening from our camera on top of the Salesforce Tower. It doesn't get any prettier than that. And more good news, no more significant heat. I'll show you how low these numbers are going to go as we get into the 4th of July. Coming up. It's super hot out here, so we decided to chill off. But every 15 minutes or so, I just dunk my head in there, and it gives me like a mini shower. I like that. He wanted to chill off. That sounds good. People did whatever they could to beat the heat over the weekend. The way families cooled off during another day of those scorching temperatures, I needed to chill off. Yes, it was <laughs> hot. But as we know, the 4th of July is upon us and celebrations are coming. But we want to show you how quickly flames can spread due to fireworks here. A warning straight from fire crews this morning. And as you get ready to hit the roadways this morning, we are dealing with some foggy spots out there, especially affecting some of our Bay Area bridges. I'll tell you which ones. But first, we're going to start with breaking news. A suspect is dead after being shot by a sheriff's deputy overnight in San Leandro. The Alameda County Sheriff's Department held a press conference a short time ago. A spokeswoman says that shooting followed a pursuit of a suspected stolen car on the 580 and then a physical struggle as a suspect tried to grab a CHP officer's gun. That deadly shooting happened on 163rd Avenue. Two other people now in custody. The law enforcement officers involved in that incident are said to be doing OK. And thousands of Bay Area households are without power this morning. Take a live look at pg &E's outage map right here. Yellow diamonds show areas with up to 500 customers in the dark. And then the orange squares, which really looks like only out in Stockton right now, says uh, that's more than 500 customers. So pg &E says the outages are linked to hot weather, although it is not clear if this refers to the heat itself or an increased use of air conditioners. Mine was in full gear this weekend. And it was uh, you. You did it. It was me. It was me. There's a lot of people. Like, and all my neighbors. You've got to think that's a likely cause, but. You Absolutely. Know, I mean, would... it's expected to when we hit these higher temperatures. We saw that a lot last year with our hot spike we had as well. But you have some good news for us for those better. that uh, haven't slept the last couple of days because of the heat. It's about to get better. And before we talk about that cool down, look at the view from the top of Sutro Tower. This is live looking out off towards the east, obviously. Sunrise officially at 558. There is the Salesforce Tower sticking up just barely above the marine layer. And there's Mount Diablo off in the distance with a gorgeous scene unfolding. Temperature not reporting for downtown San Francisco, but I can tell you we're right about 57 degrees in the city. And when we look at San Jose, pretty much in the same spot at 60 degrees here, those are clear skies over San Jose. And here's how the cool down plays out down here. 80 degrees would be an average for this time of year. You're not quite getting there today. But you're going to get much closer. You're going to top out at 85 by the time we get to about 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon right here. You were sitting in the mid to upper 90s over the weekend. So that's already an improvement. And we're going to get you below average in this seven-day forecast. And we'll look at that for San Jose and everybody else coming up in the complete first alert forecast in just a bit. In the meantime, if you're getting ready to step outside, as pretty as those clouds looked from the top of Sutro, it's really limited to just the immediate Golden Gate right now. Everybody else has clear skies for the most part in temperatures that are either in the upper 50s or low 60s. You can see where the daytime highs are going for today. Still a bit above average, but so much better than where we were over the weekend. I'll see you with the complete first alert forecast coming up in a bit. Gianna, still foggy on the Golden Gate Bridge, I take it. It is, Darren, and it's been like this for most of the morning. So if you are getting up early, getting ready to make that ride across the Golden Gate, visibility is certainly going to be an issue. That's because of this all this fog. It's just a blanket over the span right there, just hovering over those traffic lanes. And you can see things are moving along OK for the most part because traffic's pretty quiet, not really crowded out there this morning. A lot of people have the day off with 4th of July being tomorrow. But with that said, you might see some slightly slower speeds as you work your way through there. And certainly be careful taking 101 close to here through Sausalito, Waldo Grade. You might be dealing with same issues here with that fog. Highway 1 at 280 in that Daly City area as you work your way over into the city. There's some foggy spots there as well. It's totally different at the Bay Bridge. Talk about, you know, what a difference just crossing the Bay makes. And here's a live look at conditions heading into the city. And right now it is fairly quiet with an easy ride heading into San Francisco via the Bay Bridge. Amanda cool down over the weekend. People across the Bay Area are once again looking for ways to beat the heat. Dallin shows us how some dealt with it. Cool, wet, fun. This splash pad in Dublin turned into a paradise for many families seeking relief from the heat. It's super hot out here, 
So we decided to chill off. They weren't alone. Hundreds of people spent the day at the Wave Aquatic Center. The manager says the city run facility saw record crowds this holiday weekend. We had our highest attendance for a Friday and highest attendance for a Saturday. Um, and in regards to the Saturday, it was the highest attendance I've seen here at the facility. One person who wishes she can be here is advertisement worker Aaron Jordan. I'd like to think I'm pretty much the hardest working person in Livermore right now. She's got more energy than the Energizer Bunny. It's hard to miss her at the entrance to downtown Livermore, dancing with a sign to sell 17 new homes. And every 15 minutes or so, I just dunk my head in there and it gives me like a mini shower. <laughs> I hope I don't get your mic screwed up. A lot of water breaks and cooling off in the shade. I've been doing some Zumba workouts or I just jam and rock hard, you know, go with the flow of the music. My phone says I burn about 1,200 calories. No slowing down, even in the scorching heat. She says at least it's cooler than Saturday. Yesterday was really rough. There was no wind and my, my skin felt like it was sizzling. Happy Sunday fun day. Many downtown businesses say the heat isn't good for business either, unless you have an ice cream store. It gets a little slower. We're doing about 20% less because people are so hot. Aaron says on a day like today, nothing beats running through the splash pad. Well, on the peninsula, a lot of people headed over to Pacifica. I don't blame them. Here's how Linda Mar Beach looked yesterday afternoon. Many taking advantage of that nice ocean breeze. It was so packed. Finding parking, though, was the biggest challenge. It's very, very difficult to find parking here. Um, and yeah, there's just not enough. It causes a traffic jam. It takes forever to get here sometimes. You can stay with us as we keep you up to date on the 4th of July weather conditions. You can also find us on KPIX.com and streaming on the CBS News app. That's why you got to know people, Justin, like Gianna. Yep, you got to know got G, so parking. if you come over there, we know where to park. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right, tomorrow is the 4th of July, and we know some of you all have either stocked up on all of those fireworks, we're talking about the safe and sane ones, or made plans to catch a fireworks show. While you get ready to enjoy your holiday, though, fire officials across the Bay Area are warning you yet again to stay safe during these celebrations. I want you to watch this video with us. This is from Butte County. The fire department there sent us this video, and it shows us just how quickly even a small fire can ignite dry vegetation. Look at how quickly that spread. This is even worse during elevated fire conditions, so be very careful out there. And then check this video out of demonstration. This is in the East Bay. Con fire ignited this hillside with a sparkler to show how quickly the flames can spread it to something way bigger. We talked to a captain there at Con Fire about how they worked this fire out yesterday. We had a fire this afternoon in Hercules that expanded to about three acres before it was uh, contained. That was attributed to illegal fireworks. We have fires every year uh, up to the 4th uh, for several weeks leading up to the 4th and even sometimes for weeks after the 4th. Uh, this is a, a real ignition problem. And just to be clear, that fire was from last week, not yesterday. So as a reminder, Dublin is one of a handful of Bay Area cities that allow safe and sane fireworks. Other cities include Union City and Pacifica and a few others. Even with safe and sane fireworks, though, fire officials want to make sure you handle them with care to avoid any unnecessary emergencies. Amanda. Yep, be smart this week. Mm -hmm. We all appreciate it. All right, thanks, Justin. Let's take a look at our top stories now, and we are going to start with a mass shooting in Baltimore that killed two young people and hurt more than two dozen others. Surveillance video here shows the chaos under the gunfire. Baltimore police say at around 1230 yesterday morning, at least two people started shooting into an annual block party in the city's Brooklyn neighborhood. In the hail of all the bullets, a 20 year old man and an 18 year old woman were killed. At least 28 others were shot and injured, with their ages ranging from 13 to 32. So far, there are no arrests. Thousands of hotel workers are hitting the picket line in Southern California. That strike is happening during one of the busiest holidays in years for the hospitality industry. This is just the latest group of American workers to walk off the job demanding better pay and benefits. And speaking of strikes, thousands of Starbucks employees went on strike last week. That was after their union alleged the company would not let some stores decorate for Pride Month. 
and workers from UPS, the nation's largest shipping company, have now voted to authorize a strike. They are threatening a walkout if their demands for better pay and more full-time jobs are not met by the end of the month. Under this administration, the union truly feels that this is the window of opportunity to get things done. UPS says in a response it wants to reach a timely agreement for that works for employees, customers, and the economy. And Hollywood screenwriters, they've been off the job now for two months. They could soon be joined by actors who are currently negotiating with studio producers over their contract. We generate massive amounts of profit for large multinational corporations, and we just want a fair share. Well, the Hollywood Directors Union also threatened to strike last month, but was able to reach a deal with the studios.